Our first reading for this Sunday is from Isaiah 61, 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. Though the people had returned to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon, they continued to face hardships and oppression. In the language of the Jubilee year described in Leviticus 25, the prophet, moved by the Spirit of God, announces deliverance for those who are oppressed and comfort for those who mourn. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They should build up the ancient ruins and shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Our Psalm today is Psalm 126. The Lord has done great things for us. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream, that our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. And they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O God, like the watercourses of the Neb. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Our second reading for the day is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. Paul concludes his letter to the Thessalonians by encouraging them to live lives of continual joy, prayer, and thanksgiving. The closing blessing is grounded in the hope of Christ's coming. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. <laughs> 